first of all, just want to ask the question I'm sure everyone is thinking today, why? I care passionately about the future of our country and uh, my time in the U.S. Senate, I particularly enjoyed working on the Foreign Relations Committee and the international issues. And as I see America, what we're doing in the world, and I think we can make better decisions. I like to say, uh, use our brains, not our biceps, as we look at our position in the world. And of course, I care about the domestic issues also. Mm -hmm. I was actually there, the fall of 2013, I remember too, we're at DMV, and you made the announcement that you were not seeking re-election for governor and that you didn't have a job lined up and you were just going to see what happens in the next few months. At that point, did you know or have a feeling that you wanted that time off to possibly look into a uh, run for president? Yes, yes. Prior to making that decision, my wife and I talked about whether to run for re-election. She said, what do you really want to do? And I talked about the international issues and getting back on the national uh, stage, so to speak. And so at that point, we made the decision, don't run for re-election. When you're done leading Rhode Island out of the recession, making some good decisions so that we can get our state on the right path, uh, then you can look at that uh, possible next adventure. Okay, so you knew this was coming down, so was it hard for you to, to keep it quiet just between you and your wife? Uh, the main thing was to get Rhode Island going in the right direction, so uh, I couldn't move on unless I accomplished that. And we had the biggest drop of unemployment, the rate of unemployment of any state except four in my term as governor until now. All right. So um, we know. Obviously so I can say that's a record of accomplishment. <laughs> so obviously, you know, starting off as a Republican, then changing to independent, and now a Democrat. So far, we don't have any um, Democratic candidates who announce that they're looking into, seriously announce that they're looking into running for president. What makes you right now feel like you are a leading Democratic candidate? Well, first of all, I never changed on my core convictions all through that evolution from a Republican to an independent to a Democrat have always been the same, whether it's on fiscal responsibility or the environment or personal liberties or using the tools of government to help the less fortunate or keeping us out of these quagmires we keep seeming to get into overseas. So I've never changed on that. My record has been very, very consistent. And the parties have changed. The Republican Party certainly has changed from when I first started in it. Uh, and so uh, they align, these issues align very closely with the Democratic Party. And uh, I'm very comfortable uh, being a candidate for president as a Democrat. Do you think you uh, can stack up well against uh, possibly Hillary Clinton if she decides to run? Yes, particularly on the international issues. That's where we're going to differ the most. Uh, and she voted for the war in Iraq, which I would argue one of the biggest, worst decisions in American history. And I voted against it. And so we are now living with the ramifications of that bad decision whether it's in the Middle East or North Africa, across the world, loss of American credibility, loss of our relationship with our alliances. So that's going to be an issue that we're going to differ on sharply. Mm -hmm. We've seen the vast majority of Democrats backing Hillary Clinton in the early polls. I mean, so your, is your message to these Democrats fundamentally, Hillary Clinton is not who you want, she's not the right person for the Democratic Party? Absolutely. I, I would argue that we should not have a president of the United States that voted for the war in Iraq. It's that bad a decision. There were no weapons of mass dis destruction. It was just a bad decision that we're living with the ramifications today. It's relevant to today. And even further than that, I don't think the Democratic Party should have as our candidate going to the election someone that voted for the war in Iraq. Secretary Clinton has said she, I think she regrets that vote now. Uh, do you, you know, not accept her regrets or her apology for it, or is it? Uh, she said it's a mistake, but it's a huge mistake. And the repair work, it's just enormous that we have to do in the Middle East and elsewhere around the world as a result of that mistake. And uh, we had just finished with Vietnam when the decision to go back into Iraq I and mean, some of the veterans were, were dealing with their issues, the Vietnam veterans. And so to go back in to another quagmire and create not only the horrible casualties that we had, but also the veterans that returned, the brave veterans that returned with so many issues, uh, it was just a huge mistake. Kind of shifting back now here to Rhode Island, um, you know, you have said that you think you're more popular outside the state. What makes you say that? Uh, well, I want to change that. <laughs> <laughs> Get my message out about uh, how we dropped the unemployment in Rhode Island, got, got uh, our state going in the right direction. I even like to say the little things like improving the wait times at Department of Motor Vehicles, which you referred to earlier, 
Uh, someone said yesterday they were in there for 20 minutes registering the car. So uh, the big things, the little things, getting Central Falls fixed, uh, certainly getting cities and towns. Providence was eligible for bankruptcy when I came in, putting the money into the cities and towns. Uh, I, I want Rhode Islanders to know that uh, my record is not only as mayor but as governor uh, is a good one and uh, hopefully those popularity numbers will be better. But it is true, <laughs> sometimes I travel out outside the state, they remember uh, my votes against the Bush tax cuts, the votes against the war in Iraq, and, uh, and, and they like that. Um, so you, you're exploring this decision. Have you talked to President Obama about this? No, I have not yet. Uh, certainly we met when I became a Democrat, uh, but we haven't talked about it since. And more At the proper time, I'm sure we will. Yeah. And more importantly, uh, so what does your wife think about this? She's supportive. My family's supportive. And um, back in 2004, you did flirt with challenging um, you know, President Bush back in the New Hampshire primary. What happened there? How come you didn't really move forward? Uh, yes, I thought that considering the decisions he had made in his first term and going back on the promises that he had made as a candidate, he should be called on those, the promises he made as a candidate, because I was a supporter of him as a candidate. And then going back on them, whether it was in the environment or on the tax cuts or on the, uh, our, our relationship with our allies around the world. Uh, but it really, for me and my positions that I had taken to get into a Republican primary uh, uh, w w were not going to work. And so what are your plans now? You, you talked about in your video that you posted online the next few weeks and months having explore, an exploratory committee. What are your plans? Specifically to get in touch with city and town Democratic chairs in Iowa and New Hampshire and ask them when their next meeting is and I'd like to attend and meet their activists that are, uh, care about the issues in each little town and city uh, across New Hampshire and Iowa. And I came up to the local level being a councilman and a mayor, and I know everybody has these little meetings, and that's where you can uh, touch people and listen to their concerns and share your ideas. Mm -hmm. And with a possible presidential run, a lot comes with it, including having the support and having the money. Do you feel confident about those two? Uh, that's a huge task ahead. Uh, certainly, Senator Clinton has a gigantic war chest, and, uh, but I've run in many races and money a part of any successful campaign. Are you willing to put your own money into into a race? Uh, that's going to pale in comparison to what you need to be successful in a presidential campaign. So if it is definite, do you know when an announcement might come? I don't. I don't have a timetable for that. This is the first step under the law. You're allowed to have this exploratory committee and see what kind of support you can get out there. But I definitely want to be there in November, December, and January prior to the New Hampshire primary. Do you want to participate in debates with I Secretary do. Clinton? I do. I want to be there, sharing my ideas. So uh, I'll save my money if I have to, to make sure I'm there at that time. What do you think this says about being the first Democrat to announce that you are exploring a presidential run? Well, certainly others are being very active. Governor O'Malley from Maryland's very active. Uh, former Senator Webb from Virginia is active. Uh, Sen Senator Bernie Sanders is less active now, uh, and Senator Clinton is uh, on everybody's uh, top list of uh, most formidable candidates. But was it important for you to get your name out there first? Yeah, it's, it's that time. We're seeing on the Republican side many, many uh, candidates. Uh, and looking back through previous uh, primary, this is about the time when people uh, get involved and go to work. How much money do you think you need to be to run a competitive race in the, in the next, you know, the rest of this year? As I said, uh, there's a broad range. What was Senator Clinton have hundreds of millions of dollars? Uh, Ted Cruz raised $35 million in a week. Uh, yeah, but whatever it takes and whatever I have to save and what I have to do just with shoe leather, I'm going to do so that I'm there at that time in November, December, and January prior to the New Hampshire primary. What's been the reaction today? Since, since the news got out from uh, other folks you know, you've been in politics a long time. I think Democrats are happy to have choices. I've heard from a lot of people, good, they're getting more choices, and that's what we need. Anything else? I'm good. I have just a couple more for you, Governor. Um, 
you know, we, you alluded to it, Kelly alluded to it, your approval rating was not high in Rhode Island throughout your term. I know that frustrated you. You said that to Tim and I at times. Uh, what lessons do you take from what happened with your popularity in Rhode Island that you want to do differently in a presidential run? Uh, I'm proud of my record as governor. I was consistent with what I campaigned on as a candidate. I said we needed to have some tax increases. That was very brave of me. And many said not, not smart as a candidate to say we're going to raise some taxes. Uh, and so I'm proud of my record. It, it, sometimes you just can't control things that happen. And I understand that Rhode Islanders were angry and stressed out. Their, their salaries were being cut. Their houses were being foreclosed on. They were losing their jobs. Uh, and I understood that. There was a lot of anger. Uh, sometimes the irrational negativity kind of perplexed me uh, that we're all working together to get Providence back on its feet, to resolve the pension uh, issues that we had to deal with, uh, to get people back to work. Now's the time to work together. Sometimes that didn't seem to be but happening National all Democrats the time. Democrats are going to look and say, this is a guy he won with 36 percent, and then his approval rating was low enough after that he decided not to even run for re-election. And uh, some folks thought you there was no way you could win that. I mean. What are National Democrats to make of that record when they want someone who can beat the Republican next November? Don't forget, the facts are pesky. We had the biggest drop in the unemployment rate of every state but four. And those are the facts. So I came in in very bad circumstances, and then 38 Studios bomb went off right in the middle of my four-year term. That set us back. That's something I fought vociferously against, making that $75 million investment with a baseball player. And yet, none, it went kaput on us, us taxpayers. Uh, but in the end, uh, we came out of the recession in good shape. What are we down at 6.3% now? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's, that's good news. Do you think and also, when you talk about 36%, uh, oh, everybody always says that, but they don't mention that there were four legitimate candidates and another three uh, other candidates were taking some votes. Mm -hmm. uh, Gina Raimondo, what'd she get? 40% with three candidates. Mm -hmm. I got 36% with four legitimate candidates. Republican, a Democrat, a moderate party, and an independent. Do you think you can win the nomination? Of course. You do? I do. And would you consider it a victory if you ran and made your points in the debates, even if Hillary Clinton is still the nominee? Yes. Yes. I want to make my points. I definitely want to make my points, because I care about where this country is going. Could you support Hillary Clinton in the end if she's the nominee? We're getting ahead of ourselves now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make my points, which I care passionately about. And uh, we'll see where it goes. I had to try. Anything else? <laughs> no, I think I'm good. All right. Oh, wait, our little point. Oh, yes. Um, just fun uh, fact. Charlie Bax reminded us today that you and Jeb Bush were in the same dormitory yes. at Phillips Academy. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. Is that funny to you that you both are now in this presidential race after being in school together? We, uh, yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Small world. Yeah. But Do you uh, you have any memories? I think we both have a long way to go until we uh, meet each other. In, uh, in uh, He has to win on the Republican side, I have to win on the Democratic side. Did you know each other well? Yes, very well. It was an 11-person dorm. Small. Yes, a cottage, they called it. <laughs> Do you keep in touch at all? Not much. 